You are welcome to Edu 303 lesson number two. In this lesson, we shall be talking about the skills of measurement. The basic goal of this lesson is to help you, the learner, to understand the nature of data and the skills of measurement, and specifically the following are the objectives for this class. We expect that by the end of this class, you should be able to explain the concept of skills of measurement, discuss the nature of data, discuss the properties of measurement skills, describe the nominal skills of measurement, the ordinal skills of measurement, interval scale of measurement and ratio scale of measurement. Let's start. Data. The nature of data. As a teacher who is involved in the business so to say, of educational measurement, note that the basis of educational measurement is of course data. We can regard data as that value you get from observing, that is measuring, counting, assessing, from the process of testing. So testing yields data for you. And that value you get from testing, let's call it the data. Your data can either be categorical or metric. That is, when you administer your test, you get a value which we call data. It can be either categorical or metric. What do we mean by this? We'll say shortly. But that your categorical data can further be divided into nominal and ordinal data. Whereas metric data can be divided into discrete and continuous. And metric data are also regarded as quantitative data. Still on nature of data, let's take a look, diagrammatic look, at the classification of data as we have just discussed. We said data divided into two categories. Yes, two categories. The first is categorical data and the second numerical data. We can call categorical data qualitative data and numeric quantitative data. Categorical data further divided into two. Yes, and these are nominal data and ordinary data. While numeric data also further divided into two, and these are discrete data and continuous data. We shall soon see what each of these four data types really are referring to. When you talk about qualitative data, or categorical data. You are talking about data that cannot be expressed as number. And when we get number, attach numbers to them for the sake of measurement, the numbers are just for the purpose of identification or making an order. Examples of qualitative data include gender, socioeconomic status, religious affiliation, hair color, these are qualitative data. And as we've mentioned, qualitative data can be divided into two types, nominal and ordinal data. Examples of nominal data, that is data in which the numbering are just for the purpose of identification, may be such data such as country, gender, race, hair color, your country or state of origin, and so on and so forth. Examples of ordinary data include your position in the class, the birth order, the educational level. Still on nature of data, let's take a look at quantitative data. Quantitative data or numeric data, data that can be expressed as numbers or that can be quantified. Examples of quantitative data include your scores and achievement tests. The number of hours you used in study, the weight of a subject, the age of students, the height, and what have you. And I've mentioned earlier, quantitative data can be classified into two. They have continuous data 
and discrete data. Let's take a look at what these are referring to. When you talk about continuous data, data that is continuous, so the way the terminology suggests, that continuous data can take any value, have almost infinite number of possibilities between any two values. Let's take a look at height. If I, my height, assuming is 1.5 meters, and yours is 1.6 meters. In between these two, there are almost infinite number of possibilities. Somebody can be 1.5, 1 meters, 1.5, 2 meters, 1.5, 1, 1, 1 meters, depending on the degree of accuracy. And when you talk about age too, somebody can be 10 years old, the other person 10 years, 3 months, 5 days, and another one 10 years, 3 months, 5 days, 2 seconds. So there are infinite number of possibilities. These are examples of continuous data. When you talk about discrete data, you're talking about data that can take specific values, fixed values. This may include numbers of students in a class. It must be specific. Is it that you have 10 or 15 or 16 or 17? You cannot have 16.5. It must be specific. These are examples of discrete data. Now, let's look at properties of measurement scale. Measurement scale is expected to satisfy one or more of these properties. Every measurement must satisfy one of these four properties. One, identity. The scale of measurement must have a value on the measurement scale. That value must have a unique meaning. For example, if I give one, it is to identify it has that unique meaning in its own case. So it, every measurement scale must have identity. Measurement scale may also have magnitude. Let me clarify this so that it becomes very clear. The properties of measurement and each of the scales of measurement must have certain characteristics, at least one of the four we are going to measure, mention. Some may have one, some may have two, some may have three, some may have all the four. So we've talked about identity, which has to do with the uniqueness of that numbering that is attached to the measurement. Magnitude, we're talking about the values on the measurement scale must have its own magnitude. And we can use that magnitude to now make an ordering that this is more than this or that is lesser than that. That is what magnitude means. Another property of measurement scale has to do with equal interval. By this, scale units along the scale are equal to one another. This means, for example, that the difference between, for example, 1 and 2 would be equal to the difference between 19 and 2. And that is one of the very vital quality or property of measurement scale. Finally, absolute to zero. This scale has a true zero point. In this case, zero means absolute zero, and no value can ever, ever fall below it. Now let's take a look at the measurement scales. There are four scales of measurement, and the four scales of measurement are in such a way that the one above has all the properties of the one below. Take note we've talked about the four properties of measurement scales. So the first measurement scale has its own property. The second measurement scale has its own property, but the one above it, the second one, has all the properties of the one below the first one. The third scale of measurement has all properties of the second and the first, first scale of measurement. Now, let's take a look at the four scales of measurement. The first is nominal scale, which is the lowest scale of measurement. Above it is the ordinal scale of measurement. And above it is the interval scale of measurement. And above it, the highest scale of measurement is the ratio scale of measurement. As we've mentioned earlier, the nominal scale of measurement 
is the least. Ordinal scale of measurement is the one above, which subsumes all the properties of or the nomina. Interval scale of measurement is the third scale, which subsumes the, scale, the, the properties of ordinal and nomina. A ratio scales of measurement has all the properties of interval, ordinal, and ratio, sorry, and nominal scale of measurement. So this is direction of increasing level of complexity. Let's take a look at the four scale of measurement. How can you remember them? You can remember them by these simple mnemonics. No, which means black in French. N O I R. N nomina O ordina I interval R ratio scale of measurement. These are the four scales of measurement. Still on the scale of measurement, let's take them one by one. The nominal scale produces nomina of categorical data. In this case, the numbering is just for the purpose of naming, labeling, identification. The scale produces data meant only for identification. They cannot be used for any meaningful order of classes. So, nominal scores cannot be ranked or ordered along any dimension. The categories must be exhaustive and mutually exclusive. For example, when you talk about blood type, if you a blood type, you give the numbering to read, it is just to label. You talk about gender, for example, you talk about male as one, female as two. The numbering is just for labeling just for identification just for categorization you cannot say because female is labeled as two therefore it has more properties of gender than male that is labeled as one other examples include location hair color smoking status in such instances when you do the numbering uh, you are measuring and attaching numbers to such values to such qualities rather that numbering, that measurement is operating as nominal scale of measurement and the numbering suggests no other. The next is ordinal scale of measurement. This, in addition to having the property of nominal scale, that is identification uniqueness of the number, it also gives an indication of an order the scale produce data meant for identification, just like nomina, and can be put in meaningful order of classes. But equal interval does not translate to equal quantity. Let's look at example. We talk about pain as an example. We can now classify pain into three: mild, moderate, severe. The label mild as one, moderate as two severe as three note that odd numbering suggests an order three is of higher intensity of pain than one and two is in the middle but uh, but the ordering does not suggest that one the difference between one and two is equal to the difference between two and three that is equal interval does not translate to to in quantity you cannot see that the difference between mild pain and moderate pain is equal to the difference between moderate moderate pain and severe pain that is a shortcoming of the ordinal scale of measurement yes it has the properties of identification it has properties of magnitude but does not give that equal interval to tell you that the equal interval will mean the same thing as equal quantity. Let's go to the next two scales of measurement, the interval scale of measurement. The interval scale produces data meant for identification, like ordinal scale of measurement, nominal scale of measurement, sorry. It also produces meaningful order of classes, like ordinal scale of measurement, in addition, equal interval translate to equal quantity. However, it has limitation of not having the quality of zero value. 
absolute zero does not exist. Zero value does not indicate absolute zero. Example includes most of the data that which you we use in the in education achievement achievement score with example attitude opinion and to some extent in physical science we have measurements such as temperature where you measure it in Fahrenheit or in degrees Celsius to operate that interval scale because absolute zero does not exist and finally talking about the ratio scale of measurement the ratio scale produces data meant for identification like nominal scale of measurement meaningful order of classes like ordinal scale of measurement and equal interval translate to equal quantity like interval scale of measurement however it processes the quality of having absolute zero that is zero value does indicate absolute zero most measurements in the physical sciences operate at this level of measurement. 